<laughs> there we go. All right. And I do want, eh, we could just leave it the way it is. I think that should be fine, right? What's up, people? How y'all doing? I am live streaming right now for the first time doing something other than gaming and this one I hope will go pretty interesting um, I think we got it all set up we did a bunch of tests on it so let me know if the audio is good if uh, the video is good and if you I don't know want to talk about something for sure but uh, yeah we're live streaming right now with the purpose of taking apart this little beast right here um, and just to give you guys an understanding, uh, last year we bought a 3D printer that um, I have been wanting since I got exposed to it back in college. And it was really, really like a Christmas dream come true to me. But um, I've always wanted to do something practical with a 3D printer, like use it for its purpose. Hey, Dootsie Smith, how you doing? And uh, using it for the purpose of making something that I'd actually use and be engaged with, enjoy. And, um, you know, instead of starting with, like, little trinkets, I wanted to scale it up to something that was kind of big, kind of, like, huge, uh, to me at least, and something that moves. Because, uh, honestly, the difference between mechanical engineering and civil engineering is movement, so I wanted to do something mechanical engineering related. Oh, phone's ringing, sorry. But, uh mechanical engineering related and the first thing I was thinking about is something that drives something that moves mm -hmm. well the very first thing I'm sorry I will be right back Better? Okay. No more vibrations. All right. So the very first thing I was thinking about doing is uh, making something that moves around, something that actually has a little bit of dynamic motion to it. And this is like the thing, right? The thing that I, I thought of. The first thing I was actually thinking of was like a quadcopter, but I figured light was a little bit harder than linear movement on the ground, so like 2D versus 3D travel seemed a little bit easier to start with. And I knew nothing about radio control nonsense, so it made no sense to actually dive into a flying thing when I had no idea how a regular moving thing actually translated. And this ended up teaching me a crap ton about uh, how these types of vehicles work, how these little cars work, uh, the intricacies behind them, is ridiculous uh, to say the least like uh, and the level of detail people get in whenever they're making these types of models is just crazy so just so you guys know what this is I didn't design all of this this is the Tarmo 4 I'll put some information in the final description about where I got this and um, how you can get it yourself if you have a 3d printer and you want to make something like this um, he has a really good list of parts so that you can order absolutely everything you need to put it together. Some of the parts take a long time to get in, and a couple of the parts that I found, you know, burst into flames. So you want to make sure you're getting the right stuff, but also, you know, it's a learning experience. You're not doing it because you want it out of the box. You're doing it because you want to know how to make something that's a little bit more complicated than usual work. So. That's what this guy is. Uh, this is an RC car, a radio-controlled car that is called the Tarmo 4, T-A-R-M-O-4, uh, because there are three other iterations beyond, uh, before this one. And the, the designer behind it is amazing. He did a great job. There are definitely some things I would change about it, and there's definitely some things I'm going to change about it. And, um, you know, it's one of those really cool uh, starter projects. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing, I think it's amazing. So, I, uh, so what we're doing today, I need to take this guy apart. I need to take all of these pieces apart and make sure that I know 
how much of each individual pieces are there. Um, kind of do a little bit of Adam Savage's knolling where you just kind of spread out all the parts to get that nice beautiful insta shot, of course. But uh, mainly we're, we're just gonna try and spread out all those parts, but we also know that there's a couple of things in here that need to be addressed. So when I was putting this together, it was all dry fit, so there's no like lubrication or anything like that. So that's one of the things we're gonna be doing later when, um, when the stream is over. And we're also gonna just make sure all the parts are not broken. Because a couple of these things and pieces do break. They like shatter apart into pieces and we have to do some reprints on those, make sure those are in working order. And some of those pieces I'm gonna talk about doing a little bit of redesign on. So that's what we're doing today. That is what we're doing. But I want to show that this actually does work first. And for that, I need to lift this off the ground a little bit because I don't want it to go flying everywhere. And you get a taste of what the current issue is with it and why I want to take it apart. Sparks. Sparks like the 4th of July. And this is just a regular radio controller. Let me give you guys a zoomed in on this guy. So this is just a regular radio controller. Um, it's, it's nothing too special, just straight from the store and probably the cheapest thing I could find. Uh, turn this guy on. And then that's pretty much it. As you can tell, this is a little overpowered Right now it's at 25-ish percent, so the, the actual power that's being delivered by this motor is 25% of its capabilities. And I'm going to leave it like that because, you know, this motor is already overpowered, like a lot. Um, but you'll see the first thing is that this wheel is not turning at all, and this one is trying to turn. So that makes, uh, that means that there's, um, inside this differential, there's a pin that's broken, and I need to get a metal pin for it, but I've just been using wire. Uh, that's the first thing I want to check out, as well as these bearings here. Um, these gears here in this gearbox need to be lubed up so that we get nicer translation between like forward and backward, and there's no not quite as much lag. And then uh, that that's about it for right now. But uh, I just wanted to show you that this thing does actually work and that it is capable of, uh, of movement. And I put in a video on Instagram, if you're not following me, it's leveling up at life, everything's leveling up at life. And uh, it, uh, it shows it moving around um, on these really cool 3D printed wheels, which we'll get into in a little bit, because I have to replace a couple of these as well, because one of those is broken. Uh, which one is it? Forget which one it is. It's this one? It's this one. Yeah, so you can see right there, maybe now you can see that this is like totally separated. And just so you know, it's not supposed to do that. That actually helps a lot with the deflection there, but it's, it's not supposed to do that. Yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> it's really loud. Like I was saying, this thing is quite overpowered for, for what it's moving around. Um, this motor was specced by the designer of it and it's a brushless, uh, brushless 1450 kV motor. Um, and that means absolutely nothing uh, when you look into it because motors are not necessarily truthful. But um, it's, it basically is, is probably like two or three times overpowered. And like I said, 25% and this thing will like go. Uh, the other thing, I guess we'll get into the wheels right now because the wheels are in my opinion, one of the coolest parts of this piece. The wheels are 100% 3D printed. Uh, these wheels are um, designed by me based off of other people's you know, recommendations about what they should look like. And you can get a zoom in of these guys. So uh, these wheels, um, I, I designed them. I did a couple of iterations to get the kind of flexion that I was looking for but then I noticed that this one was broken. So I went last night and 3D printed some replacement wheels uh, that are gold because that's what's in the printer right now. Uh, that just a little bit bigger on the outside diameter. It might be very hard to see, but it's a really small difference, like um, one additional print head size bigger. 
uh, so that I can still get that deflection that I like uh, on these wheels. So there's a lot of flex in them. And the, the big ticket with these is when it flexes like this, like when it flexes, it needs to have good contact with the ground, right? So the more surface area with the ground or the less air in a tire, so to speak, the better kind of traction it's gonna get. But I also need to figure out what I wanna do because I have to, I have to figure out some way of putting a good grip on these things. And there's a lot of ways to do it and I just kinda of have to pick one and go with it and sacrifice a couple of wheels to do it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll be figuring that one out as well while everything is apart. So without too much further ado, we're ready to get started. So baby, can you log into my Instagram and let people know that I'm live streaming? That would be fantabulous. And um, we're just gonna start taking this apart. And as I come apart uh, to some like interesting sections of this thing, we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail and uh, kind of get into it, you know what I'm saying? So, um, to put this guy together, uh, it comes with a variety of pieces. And I'm thinking about using some of them again and not using a lot of them again because it made it pretty complicated and I had to buy a lot of individual parts that I didn't want to buy. So I really just want to know where I want to get started with this, I think. I think I want to get started with getting the electronics off of here. So the good thing about this, I did like um, plugs for all of this. So it just comes apart nice and easy. The battery is inside here, so as long as we keep these terminals away from that, it should be okay. And this one is safety inside that, so there's very low risk, it'll touch anything, but safety third, right? Safety at least third. <laughs> Thanks, Bay. And if you like this stream setup, guys, Nicole basically did all of it. Um, I stole her setup 100% and I give her full credit for it. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can't have it back. This is mine now. And that's, that's about it. Like, sorry. Sorry. Goodness. Get out of the way. Antennas. Oh, I'm going to switch to this guy's view. Yeah. So like I said, I am... Um, I'm going to be nulling basically this entire stream, uh, so I'm going to go nice and slow to just take all of this apart. Um, one thing I noticed about the Tarmo is that, I'm not a liar, you're a liar, is that um, this Tarmo uh, didn't come with like 100% documentation. So like I said, the designer of this uh, is a person and they have a life outside of designing RC cars. Oh, can't get into my Instagram account. Uh, if you do it from my Google on that computer, uh, you should be able to do it. If you do it from like a, my Google screen, you should be able to do it. Um, so the designer of this uh, this engine, this, this RC car, um, not his full-time job doing it. So it's really cool that he did it because it's 100% it's hobby and he allowed it to be you know, um, used by other people for the improvement aspect of it. And I think that's really awesome. I think that's amazing. So any kind of changes I make to this, uh, I will definitely be free sourcing this because it's not, <laughs> it's absolutely not, uh, not mine. So it's not my design and I'm not taking credit for it. I do take credit for the wheels. The wheels are mine, but the design itself is not. So. All right, now we got the battery off. Um, the only thing that's connecting this up to it is this servo and I'm not sure. Oh yeah, let me just unplug that. Boom. All right, so the battery is basically, it's nice own little little piece there and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Like this is all of the electronics for it other than the motor and the servo. So battery sits inside of there. Uh, it's security locked with a couple of additional bolts. We will take those apart, but we'll basically save that for last because it's not too important right now. 
Set that aside. All right. Now, I think I want to get the wheels off next because the wheels are kind of uh, holding it up right now. And I think it would be nice to have those go. So the wheels are direct driven shafts, uh, so you can check these out. Uh, they are, I think it's number three. Yeah, so it's it's nothing too crazy, right? It's just one little gear uh, input here. They have a little extender piece that allows it to fit in um, onto this little key area for the inside of the wheel. Um, oh, that's okay. You can do it on Facebook. I'll be fine. Um, so that allows it to key to this shaft here. And this shaft drives directly from the motor. So kind of like the power comes from this little motor. It goes through to this little gearbox, which gives it a good ratio. Transmits it through these two shafts here. It's moving. It's translated. And then that goes to another gearbox one that's a direct drive and another that's a differential and this differential sends it all that power through this little bone here and you can kind of see that one turning and then that just gets translated straight to it and it's really cool like it's a it's a really cool mechanism so i'm just going to take off the rest of these wheels here I think I had these needle nose pliers back in college. Yeah, we'll probably have to reprint that. <laughs> um, we'll probably have to reprint it, those wheels too, because those wheels I made look like a chamfer, so it doesn't quite, it's not gonna, it's not gonna fit anymore, so we'll definitely have to do something about these little keys here. Uh, maybe make them a little beefier. That might be, that might be nice. But uh, I essentially enlarge that hole so that I can rip apart the wheels easier because it was a pain super pain doing it last time yeah i love the color of those wheels it's awesome uh they came out so nice like look at this just just like look at that especially the way it glows in the light it's a gold um it's a gold pla and it it's so it's so awesome <laughs> like especially compared to just the regular white pla here um this one just shines a lot more or you can see it especially in the camera it shows up a lot easier so this is the broken one um We'll look at that one in a little bit more detail. Ooh, this one's not going to come out. Yeah, this one's broken. Do it like this. Yeah. All right. So, just, yeah, just check that out. It really sucks. But on the bright side, um, it didn't like shatter and fracture all over the place. 
but that's just kind of what happens when the wheels are really that thin. So I made it a little bit beefier on that other set, but like I said, I think I'm gonna have to reprint those in general. Okay. And then one more. Super fancy, man, it's great. You also notice how this, uh, this whole setup is very much so multicolored. Multi you could tell what the cheapest PLA colors were just by looking at it. The cheapest ones were definitely white and black. But I started, the black pieces are more likely than not the original pieces that I used on this one. And it's more happenstance that it ended up being, um, like a, a good color scheme here. So the white versus the black is really whatever I did first versus whatever I did last. And it's probably not too much more complicated than that, guys. It's probably not much more complicated than that. So we keep going here. I gotta think of what, I gotta, I gotta strategize a little bit about how we wanna take this apart. Um, are we more interested in looking at how the gears and everything translate? Are we more interested in seeing how the suspension system works? Because I gotta kind of pick one of those next and just kind of go for it. I don't know. Let me know. I'm gonna start by taking apart, I think the gears. I think we wanna do the gears. We'll, we'll do the gears next. All right, so the easiest way to do the gears is to get the gearboxes on the corners. Actually, the suspension system is probably easier. So, gears? All right, we'll do the gears then. We'll do it the hard way, just because you asked for it. All right. We'll start here. <sighs> Making me do it the hard way. This is ridiculous. And you notice I have a couple of things that are using like nuts and whatnot for uh, for securing everything, but this is not. This is not using nuts. Most of this is just secured by uh, direct screw contact to the PLA, to the plastic. So most of it is just direct to the plastic. Um, so like this is just like 100% just screwed in directly to the plastic. So you can check that, semi-check that. There you go, now you can see. Uh, there, there's nothing else holding it in, so nothing uh, too crazy. The hardest part about this one, I gotta say it was um, how much money doing this DIY project costs. Like I learned a lot about um, all of these components and how they're made and where they come from and all that stuff. But I didn't realize how expensive like the individual parts were too. Like um, this motor was expensive. It's not the most expensive thing. The ESC is like 60 bucks. The remote was 50 bucks. No, that one was 30, but all the, all the nice remotes were ridiculously expensive. And the suspension system cost money, like uh, the servo cost money, but that one was pretty cheap. A lot like, Man, it, it did take a lot of actual money to put this fully 3D printed part together. And basically all the 3D printed sections are all the cheap parts for a regular RC car that are easy to replace. So I didn't realize how much that costs in general. Um, but uh, the hardest part to print was the first one. Um, you can see how this bed is 100% printed. So this bed, is like huge, right? And it's split up into three really, really smart sections so that it can house everything. But this was like the first big piece I ever printed in my entire life. So this big piece right here, this took me probably like three or four days just to get one good print. And uh, it, was, it was intense and it was a lot of cleanup. 
So when, when we were doing this bed, it, it took a long time and a lot of material. And it's probably not the first thing you want to start out when you first have your very first print. That's, that's all I'm saying. Like, the, the print bed was the hardest. Now, the actual hardest piece just logistically to print is these little dog bones that are right here. So the ones that translate from this gearbox to the wheels, these dog bones took a long time to get good settings for. And we'll, we'll take it apart and look at them, but they are very curved and they need to be curved. And if they're not circles, then it doesn't work out very well. Uh, so that was, that was probably the hardest part to actually print. Everything else in here uh, was really, really easy. Um, overall, like once you get some experience, it's not bad at all. But um, yeah, it was really, really easy. Uh, so I gotta take this motor off to get to the rest of the gearbox, and this is gonna take some time, just because of the way everything is angled here. Let's go that direction. We'll, we'll go the, the direction that normally you take things apart with, you know what I'm saying? Um, dude, there we go, now we got it. You guys want to start in the middle, you want to start with the gears, I want to see the gears, I want to know how the gears work. It's the hardest part <laughs> to get to. It's so much easier when you go from the edges. That's what I was going to do, but you wanted to do the gears, man, that's ridiculous. I can't believe I'm listening to you guys. All right, let's see. So that's good. Uh, while we're while we're doing that, um, let's look at how it actually functions. So this is the motor, right? The motor does motor things. It turns. It's really cool. The base doesn't actually turn, which was the first time I've ever seen a motor like this. Uh, so the base doesn't turn. This is a brushless motor, and it sends all of it to this entire body, which turns, right? And that delivers power to this gear, this much smaller gear. And then that goes to this much larger gear. And you can see the, um, the uh, gear setup here is really um, kind of interesting. So they have, dang it, I'm losing my terms, guys. I'm losing my terms. But these gears here turn inward on both sides just to make sure that these don't walk off, essentially. Uh, Nicole will look up what that means. It'll be 15 minutes, but she will find out what what type of gears these are. They're not not worms. Uh, shoot. See, I was bad at English. Uh, I'm really good at math. I'm really good at figuring things out, and I have very good intuitive visual sense. English words, I ain't good at, bro. I'm not good at. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get this motor off. And we'll take apart the rest of this train. So what's going on, people? How y'all doing today? Today's a pretty good day out here. It's supposed to rain, but luckily the snow's done. Um, the snow is, I don't know. I'm definitely a summer person. So I enjoy the south and its, it's lack of snow, but it looks like uh, this year that didn't work out very well. All right. And the last two bolts here. I need something to get into the space. Harris foam. There's many different types. Helical. Helical? No, not helical, right? Not helical. Helical is... Uh, there are helical ones in here, but that's not what it is. Come on. Is that, 
is a magic location. You guys want to start a metal man? Like, you're just trying to stress me out. You're just trying. Uh, I don't know. I need more stress in my life, but I don't know if I need this one. Goodness. Alright, it's probably easier just to do it super slow. It, it's probably. Almost halfway there with this motor. Do y'all want to take out the motor first? Like, Ryan, I don't want to stress you out. I want you to do the hardest way possible physically. This is why streamers don't trust you guys. Go like. I guess it makes good content. So I've tried to use some power tools on this before, and I have gone through parts, so plastic pieces. Um, don't respond well to power tools. So this is definitely like a long process for it, but at least I won't break everything when I take it all apart. Yeah, this is hard to service. If I just need to replace the motor, I probably would come from the bottom first. Final answer. Herringbone? Herringbone. Let me look. It, it might be herringbone. Maybe the survey will say so. I'll look it up and we'll see. We'll see if Nicole's got this. Alright. That, that was a better way to do it. Oh no, I lost a bearing. Ah, it's on the motor. That's cool. I just want to know where it is, that's all. Okay. So I'm good there. So much easier, guys. So much easier. There we go. I think we're close to in the clear on this, but not quite. Man. Evie should still be upstairs. We could let her down here. He is the star of the show after all. But no, I think uh, uh, probably a majority of the background noise is going to be neighbors. There we go. That's a stride. Beautiful. All right. 
Okay, so now we have the motor out of here. Um, but where did... Hmm. Awesome. Ah, there it is. Well, no. See? When it's out, it's easier. <laughs> Basically, it was the wrong answer, yes. We tried. But uh, it was the wrong answer. Alright, so yeah, this is the motor for it. Um, this little part right here um, does not come on it, so not the motor. Excuse me. So uh, not the motor, not the motor piece, but the motor piece. So. These do come apart, but I'm not going to take them apart because I like them together. And they do a good job as one individual piece. So we're just going to set them back there. And we'll leave it just like that. So yeah. Okay. Now on to the next hardest part of this whole nonsensical thing. I need to get this gear off. Um, the other thing I want to point out is these gears do have some bearings on them so that those are aftermarket pieces. So these little tiny bearings, they, they come in like packs of five or something like that. And uh, they're really cool. They're, they're super great and I like them. Uh, so yeah, next we're gonna try and take this apart. <gasps> yeah, I definitely snapped something. Yeah, I broke this. Let's see, there you go. This is really tight tolerances. <laughs> yeah, so I broke a piece just now, but that's okay. We're planning on reprinting, but this is the uh, the gear for it. So this is what it looks like. So Nicole thinks herringbone gears. All right, I'm gonna look that up real quick. So bear with me on this excursion here. What we got? Herringbone gears, it looks like that's right. Gee dang it, that is correct. They are herringbone gears. Good job, Nicole, you get points for that one. All right, so moving on to the rest of this guy. We have um, this little section here. I always break these. Um, they're super fast to reprint, so it's not that huge of a deal, but uh, I always break them. Um, but these are the transition pieces between uh, the two independent gearboxes. So what, what essentially happens is when these are hooked up, this motor will translate it to this motor, which will send power. Just took these apart. This motor will send power all the way back through to this gear, and this gear will translate that to these gearboxes. So this starts moving at that point, which is really cool, and it's really nice. And it does it to both sides. So you can see that this gear, I guess, I'm gonna break the other one too. This gear has two outputs, so both of those outputs receive equal amounts of torque, and it's really awesome. All right, so now that that's about done, we're gonna leave these pieces in there. Oh look, here's another broken piece. We're gonna leave these pieces in the middle here uh, because they don't really have much purpose of coming out other than to get it out of the way. Well, I guess we can get them out of the way. Sure, why not? So what, what goes to what here? I don't even see that. Let's go. All right, let's get these out of the way. Good job, Nicole.
You know, I think everybody really does need a hobby. Like, this, uh, this whole thing has been a really cool experience. Um, with uh, the COVID and whatnot, it's been like hard to get out and do fun things that are more typical. But um, essentially with, uh, with the way this worked out, uh, this has been a really good time suck. <laughs> like it, it takes a lot of time to do it, but it's been a really good and productive um, period where I could do something that feels like I'm hitting like a goal or something like that. Um, and I don't know, it's been really cool to, to make something. Uh, especially when you see it move for the first time and like catch on fire. It, it's really awesome, you know? Well, the, the, the fire thing was not awesome. That, that, that was not fun. But everything else about it was pretty cool. Steering before I take this all apart. So you can see like this these really cool little linkages here um, This little linkage here Attaches to this servo. So this servo turning will move these back and forth, right? And I can force it a little bit So you can see that the wheels Yeah, it's probably easier just like this. You can see that the wheels would turn now, one thing about the Tarmo that has been like um, one of the criticisms I've seen of this de the design so far is that it doesn't turn a lot. So these, um, this doesn't quite translate into enough uh, turning for it. I think you might be able to solve that by shortening up this linkage a little bit. Um, if you shorten up this linkage and you are somehow able to maybe shorten up these linkages, and extend these out and you might be able to get a little bit more of a turn radius but I think it's more of the wheels are if they turn much more would start like tearing into the actual thing so you can't really make those longer so that's been one of the things that you know I'll look into to see if I have any brilliant ideas about how to address that but um, yeah we're just gonna take this apart for right now start by taking off this linkage here And when you're putting this together, uh, there are two or three really difficult sections of it. So the, the steering is really hard um, because you have to finagle so many things to get the screws in the right position. So that comes all out. And then we will take the servo apart here. Um, the suspension is difficult because you have to work around springs. Uh, to get everything the way you need it and the the, um, the gearboxes they keep falling apart on me so the gearboxes are I think they're both just one is broken but they're screwed down in place and they work um, so that's that's fine <laughs> as long as you don't take it apart it's perfectly fine but uh, the gearboxes keep falling apart on me so I'm gonna try and print newer ones with um, more infill for strength and less infill for more flexibility and I'll see which one works out best. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one will be better. I think I've tried more infill already and it's not worked out obviously because I haven't figured out the full deals there but I think I think because of the way it screws down to the base and with those bearings that go inside of it it's causing a major issue so once we get that outlined, I think it'll be easier to, um, to work with the gearboxes. So that may be a me thing with my printer. I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah. I love it when things just fit. That's perfect. Go back to me. There we go. So yeah, for those just joining here, we're taking apart this RC car. Partly to get an idea of what all of this looks like and another part so I can make music with all the drop tools, you know, so 
I hope you're enjoying the drop tools because I don't think that's going to go away. Um, one thing that I found very interesting on this is that you do have to kind of use uh, non-power tools, so just regular hand tools. If you're working with screwed fittings directly to plastic, it, everything will fall apart. Uh, you'll start stripping screws the second anything gets close to, to being in its final location. So you want to be really careful about that and uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, like I was saying, this thing has been a real cool hobby. Um, it's been really fun to put this together. I've kind of been doing it at a reasonable pace. Because like I said earlier, uh, RC cars are not cheap even if you're making the whole body yourself. So even if you have the body by itself, uh, all the parts and components to this thing are still not inexpensive. It's still very expensive. So it's, that's been one of the biggest learning experiences I've seen here so far. But also um, I learned a lot about how my printer works because there are a lot of different types of parts here uh, that all needed to be printed. And they all needed to be printed in a specific way, too. The, uh, the person who designed this, he did a really good job at telling you general guidelines about how things should be uh, printed and the fastest way to get those printed. Um, so I'll, I'll be looking at, at adjusting a couple of these pieces because a few of them break easily, a few of them fall apart very easily, and I'd like to make sure it's a problem of the print quality and not a problem of the part design before I go in and start chopping apart pieces of the design and customizing them. So this is it. This is what we got. And like I said, I'm going to be nulling the crap out of all these pieces. Um, nulling, if you haven't read Adam Savage's book, uh, Every Tool is a Hammer. Nulling is like when you when you just have a bunch of um, stuff that needs to be in a specific order before you start. So it's kind of like the preparation or the, um, <coughs> or the saving of various tools, pieces, parts, and whatnot, so that all um, makes sense and you can kind of flow easier on a project. So I will be nulling or kind of putting out all the pieces nicely so that I can look at everything together, get a full parts list count of all the stuff that I did use on this, um, make sure any broken pieces like this one or this one or this one are replaced and uh, with upgraded pieces that will work better. And um, then I'll be doing a full tutorial on how to put this whole thing together. So if you have a 3D printer or if you have an ability to get these 3D printed, um, I'll help you figure out how to put all of it together. There's a really cool Reddit thread that did a really great job detailing how all of this came together and I basically used that as the Bible for it. So I'll just be putting that in a video format essentially. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll make it easier for other people who are interested in this kind of thing to get engaged with it a little bit on a deeper level. Anywho, anywho, we have the central section pulled out and like chat has requested, we are doing the gears here. Um, and we'll, we'll get to those gears. So I'll leave the drivetrain and everything and uh, just kind of keep going from the outside in. Um, so take apart this little piece because it's really annoying and in the way. And uh, we will jump into the gearboxes now. All right, so there are two different gearboxes that we have here. Obviously because there are two physical ones on each side of the whole thing. But they also have different gears on the inside of them. We're going to start with the easy one, which is a direct translation with no steering. And we're going to look at that first. So I'll take this guy apart, even though it's like my least favorite thing to do in the entire world. I don't like taking this apart. Um, can I take this apart without taking apart? Yeah, I probably will break something, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, and then just pop it to here.
And this is also my first live stream, so definitely go easy on me on this one. I don't know. I hope this is, this is kind of cool to me because I'm doing something. I'm like enjoying myself right now uh, because this has a purpose for uh, making this a little bit better in the near future. So if this is enjoyable and you want to just chill and talk, that's basically what this is. If you're interested in talking about anything, we're open to it. We did have a net worth update that came out Thursday which I was excited about. It's super late in the context of other people's net worth updates, but I think it's um, appropriately timed. It has all the information, so it's not really a big deal to me to jump on that wave, so to speak. Um, oh, crap, okay. Well, that blew apart really easy. All right, I guess we'll leave these in here. No. Full tear down, guys. Full tear down. Everything tear it. Tear it all. Tear everything down. All the things you love. Alright. Just thinking it'd be easier when I put everything back together. Alright. So this is the inside of this one. Uh, so you can see... When I turn this knob in the back here, this gear turns. It's not pressed down right now, which is why. But when I turn this knob, it turns a little helical gear, which Nicole can double check me on, because I'm pretty sure this is a helical gear. Um, when this helical gear in the back turns, it turns this helical gear in the front, and that causes these two to get linear motion from there. It's easier for me to show you like that. So that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty legit. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and take the rest of this apart. It's just gonna kinda fall out right there, fall out there, and then you have the actual gearbox itself. So uh, let me see, how does this go again? I think it's just these pull out, yeah. So there we go. So those are just keys. They fit into this helical uh, structure right here, just like that. It's nothing too crazy, um, but it's definitely cool. And then you got two additional bearings. So I'll set those aside right here, and we will leave this guy right there. Um, and this one there as well. So now, uh, the dog bones. These are the hardest pieces to print so far. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. These are the hardest pieces to print, right? So you can see how they have a lot of residue on them. They move a lot. Uh, so when this thing is driving forward, they turn uh, inside of there. So there's a lot of um, plastic on plastic contact that causes a lot of friction. So these definitely need to be as curved as they physically can be. But if you look at them, uh, if you look at them really close, they're not all that great curves, right? They're not all that great. Um, and that's because it's really hard to get these types of curves in a 3D printer. Um, you have to either put in a crap ton of supports, which is going to make everything look a little bit weird, or you um, allow the existing to just go and do whatever it's going to do at that point. And that's pretty much what I went with on these. I still think they're pretty good. They translate the motion really well. So there's not really a need to replace those. Um, but uh, I'll definitely be trying to figure out a better way of doing it. So we'll look at that. We'll look at it. All right. So that is basically the whole drive chain right? uh, for that direction. Other than that, we have uh, this little section here. You have just a big old bolt that fits right in there nice 3d printed section and it translates so this is where the wheels hook in with their um with their little key pieces i'm not going to break one of those again and then they also come with a little bearing which is hard to get off so you know what? i'm just going to leave that on there i will take out the bolt here and leave that right there all right and these just 
pop right out, just like that. Take out the bolts. Taking out the bolts here. All right, let's see. So that whole drivetrain is out. All we have left over here is the suspension, which is dope. All right, moving on to the drivetrain over here. Let's give that a look. all the way out. For some reason I'm better at this with my left hand than my right hand. Day Saturday, ain't it? Let's get into a more interesting gearbox here. Oops. All right, so this gearbox has a differential inside of it. And I'm gonna show you the part that keeps breaking on me so that you get an idea of what the issue is here. Um, and this one's no fault on the designer. This is 100% because I don't want to buy another rod. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at this one. Um, it's very similar on the outputs there, so you can see the little dog bones. I think that's what the the designer's calling these. But you can also see that they're different colors. So this one's probably yeah, this one's much newer. It looks a lot nicer. All right, so we'll look at this little differential box here. I'll take out this dog. Bone. All right, so you can see this differential box, right? Um, it has this little tiny yellow spot here. Make sure you can see that. This little tiny yellow spot, that's a wire. So that's just like regular wire, a uh, very simple small gauge wire. And that keeps breaking on me. So it keeps releasing from the inside here. Um, and let me see if I have other wire so that we can get it functional again. Let's see. Okay. All right. So when, when all goes well, you basically just shove this in here. Um, you hook in like a little metal rod. Uh, through this little piece, and once that's done, oof, okay. Once that's done properly, gently get it through. No, I don't think it is. How about this? There we go. All right. So we have a little metal rod in there. So once once that's set up like that, right? Once you have like a metal rod, which is shown by this, when this turns, it turns at various ratios. Um, so it won't also come out. Let's see, you got this one right here but it's not cooperating with me right now because I broke it. So we're gonna just shove this into here. All 
Okay, so. So, you have this uh, little section here. When, when this turns, it turns, right? Nothing new there. But when there's more drag on this section, it'll turn the other side more, essentially. Um, and it's a little differential. I think I'll link to some pictures of how this whole system works so that you can have an idea. But it's really cool. And that's about all you need to know right now. All right, moving on with the rest of this teardown. So this differential comes with a couple of parts to it. It goes actually this way. These are um, not 3D printed parts, but this is a little de gearbox differential. It's pretty legit, especially when you think about how somebody actually made this. So I'm just gonna set that aside. Move these bearings over here. Like to like parts. And there's also a wire in this one as well. So it's like two little metal rings that you need. Oops, that was just the conductor. Yeah. Put that. There we go. All right, so there's one piece. Great show. There's another, and then here's the other section of it. So this whole little gear differential thing is a uh, pretty legit. All right, and that goes there. Whew. Okay, but you can also pop out these little gears. So you can see how those fit together uh, nicely. Beautiful meshes here. Money, money, money. That's right. Um, so we'll set that right there, and then this one, it's the same part, I just broke it, so you can see that one broke. That's what happens when I listen to you guys. I do the things you ask me to, and my stuff breaks, <laughs> essentially. Um, so yeah, both of these gear boxes are actually broken, so I don't mind taking them apart because I need to replace them. So you're in luck. I won't feel bad about doing it, but uh, yeah. Let's see. All right, next section. So all of the uh, translation stuff is out, except for this. But this is actually gonna be very difficult to take out um, without taking apart the entire train. So I'm going to move on to the suspension for this thing. And you can tell the suspension is just these double springs sections that are just right here. So I'm going to take these off and then basically this whole thing will lose its life. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, let's go. So once I take these off, basically the whole thing will just kind of fall down in the slump and it won't look like it's ever been alive in its entire life. So it'll be a very different car. <laughs> Quite different. Uh, so, eh, say la vie. That's what we're here for though just to make sure that this guy comes apart nicely. We catalog all of the pieces and we make sure we know what we need to get it up and running once again. All right. You also see it has a lot more flexibility now. So we'll take a look at one of these suspension pieces and then I'll just take off the rest and we can talk about whatever you want at that point. Check this out. We have this suspension piece right here, right? It's just a couple of springs, but they have some interesting sections to it. I'll leave some information about how this works in the description uh, once everything is set and ready to go. So if you're watching this after the fact, I'll make sure to put that information in there for you. But uh, this is just a RC car suspension. So this is just an aftermarket replacement part. 
and it's nothing too special. Um, so we'll leave some information about it and you can check that out. Um, I did uh, tighten these springs a little bit more so that I can get this thing to stand up a little bit easier. But that's about it. Uh, it didn't take too much to get that working. So we get off all four of those, uh, one on each side, and they hook into like a little suspension piece there. All right. So if you're thinking about making one of these, um, they, like I said, there's an amazing Reddit chain where a guy put everything together and did a good job detailing how he got his to function and work. What I'm planning on doing for um, my video is explaining in a little bit more detail, giving some visuals on how to put a couple things together, uh, how to make a few things work. Um, and essentially, I want to add the additional value for people who have never done an RC car at all. Because there was a couple things in there where there was an assumption that you know how this works. Or you know how this um, goes together. Like uh, all of the RC components to it. Um, that part was hard to figure out. And it took a little bit of time. You know, It took some time to figure out how these pieces actually function together how the transmitter works, how the receiver works, um, what the differences were in the channels. So it's not complicated when you know what you're looking at, but when you have no idea what you're looking at, then it's a little daunting. And, and it was a big deterrent for a long period because uh, the RC transmitter receiver is not a cheap part and you don't want to cheap out if that means you're not going to be able to do certain functions at the very end of it, right? Because the worst thing to do to happen to a project is you get to the end of it and for some reason it just won't work. Uh, that, that to me is the worst thing. Or you just can't do it. Um, and it's just like we need to figure out what we can do to make it work so that we can progress past this point, you know? And that's, that's the hardest part of any kind of project to me um, when, when it just won't work. Uh, when, when it just uh, can't work. So I want to make sure that that section of the of the build is clear what you have to do and some some like uh, information about how the transmitter receiver ses setup should work and it varies so much with the transmitters that you choose they're so different especially when you get into the ESCs and how the ESCs work and how they're supposed to receive and send signals. So yeah and the power to this thing is also interesting. So the battery pack here, uh, it charges everything. So it, it powers everything because it's all one unit. That's how RC cars work. But um, one thing that I found interesting is the battery pack will plug directly into the ESC and the ESC will send the appropriate level of voltage to everything. Uh, so not everything requires the, the um, I think it's 13 volts, it's a 3S which is another thing that's interesting about batteries. So it's a three cell battery. But um, that, that power will go to the ESC, which is the electronic speed controller. That'll send power to the motors via those huge wires that you see on this. So I'll put this right in frame. These huge wires will send power to the motor, these guys, uh, which is obvious. But it also sends power to, um, it also will send power to, through, it's, uh, it's cable here. So this cable will go to the transmitter. It'll power the transmitter. The transmitter will send power to the other devices. So when you plug in the servo to channel one there, it'll get its power um, from the battery ultimately, but it actually passes through the ESC to the transmitter to, to the device. So it's very interesting, you know? 
And it, it makes sense when you know, but when you don't know, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's like, so I just plug everything in and make all of it live, and it, it seems kind of kind of a little bit daunting. All right, so we got the, the, su the suspension off of this thing, and now we get to do all of the fun section of it. And we're, we're actually getting pretty close to the end here. So this is also the hardest part, so it's not actually close to the end. But you see all of this right here is very integral. Uh, we'll take apart this section over here, the section of it where it's just a direct drive because it's a little bit easier on me. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll start with this. That we need this one. Yeah. Yeah. The right tool. Let's go. And this is one area where I considered using a power tool because the noise is so darn fun. Goodness. All right. This is one area where I considered using the power tool just because it's such a long screw here. Um, but I have to get like a special fitting to make it work. It's this one. You're probably thinking, but Ryan, why aren't you doing that with all of your pieces? Well, lovely viewer, it's so that I can spend so much more time with you. Obviously. Obviously. Now, it's because doing this okay, puts ridiculous wear on the plastic parts when you're using When you're using a power tool on these plastic pieces like that, it causes ridiculous wear to them. Oh crap, we got a huge crack. Huge crack. All right, so this is the suspension system. As you needed me to tell you again. Um, uh, so yeah, we got a huge crack on this one, so you can actually see that one. So it's a good thing we're taking this apart so that we can look at pieces like this, so that we can understand what caused that kind of issue and what we can do about it in the future. But, you know, uh, it, it is what it is, pretty much. Um, but we're... Avoiding using power tools for the very simple reason that when you screw in something like this, With power tools, it causes a lot of uh, friction on them. It makes the parts heat up and it breaks them essentially. So we want to avoid doing that. We want to avoid doing that as much as we can. Uh, but these are really long screws. And as much as I love you guys, And spending time with y'all, I don't want to spend that much time doing that exact same motion with my hands over and over again to no significant effect here. And I don't think it's interesting. So, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So they're just very long screws. So we can see that this has lost a lot of life. Uh, all of its legs are now decapitated. And now we just have this little suspension bar that's left. This piece we will take out by hand because I don't want to break it. Is this good content? Nicole, is this good content? Tell me now. 
I think it is. I think it's fantastic. At least I'm having some fun with this guy. Uh, getting out a lot of thoughts I thought about it at the very initial. Well, these are actually smaller screws. I'll have to remember that off the top of my head when I put it back together. Let's see. There we go. These were um, some of the first pieces that I actually put together. Uh, this one is not, this one was. But this one uh, was a reprint. You can tell uh, by the way it, it's ironed. So you can see a lot of ironing on this one. Um, and by ironing, I mean that the 3D printer head ran across it very hot and left some artifacts. So those artifacts look like that, you know? It's supposed to just be a nice flat surface, uh, similar to, I suppose this one is a pretty good print. So similar to that, it's supposed to be a nice, flat, smooth surface, but this one's surface ended up being riddled with different types of artifacts here. Um, just because the printer settings, probably it was going too fast, uh, things of that nature. So uh, those are just things that we could learn from looking at some of these prints. Like I said, this was one of the very first projects I had with my 3D printer. So there's a lot of learning that happened here that you can tell. So we're, we're basically like geologists right now. We're, we're getting in there, we're looking at all of the different artifacts, and we're figuring out what happened. <laughs> and it was chaos. It was chaos, basically. Um, don't tell Nicole. I know what I'm doing. I'm an expert. All right, and we're almost done with this side, which means we're gonna get into the more complicated side. We'll take apart the steering system, we'll learn how that works, and then we'll uh, look at the uh, linkages over there and see kind of how they're different. So the linkages, on this side were significantly easier all they have to do is up down but there's some articulation that happens on that side because of the steering set up there so we're gonna we're gonna look at that and see kind of how it, it differs a little bit and uh yeah you can definitely tell this is falling apart on me there we go so just so you know this and this are supposed to be one part so this, this part has been probably the most difficult uh, one so far, and it's caused the most headaches. Now I'll tell you why. It is because it is either too small or the print requirement is too great for my skill level at the time. So I'm going to try and reprint this part so that we can get better quality uh, better quality prints on it uh, to see if that helps. Uh, so I'm gonna be reprinting the gearboxes inside of here. Uh, I'm reprinting these gearboxes essentially with uh, newer parts with some more lessons learned from, um, from uh, the basically fail process that I've gone through multiple times already with it. And we'll look at how this snaps together and apart <laughs> so that we can get a good idea of what's needed here because I would really love it if um, this all came back together. Now I'll jump over here for a second so that we can just talk casually. I want you guys to know that you can chat me. I am interested in your questions. And uh, you know, you can start with how's your day going? Like not asking me that question because I just asked me that question I'm about to tell you. But how is your day actually going? And what are you planning on doing on a Saturday? Like. Uh, Obviously, you're watching me live stream to YouTube, which is a great use of your time. Just saying. Like, that's probably the best investment you made in your time all week. But, you know, 
what? <sighs> My day is going pretty good. We spent the morning doing what we love doing, which is watching WandaVision and uh, some YouTubers called Evan and Caitlin and they did like a, a retro redo of one of their videos this week. I thought it was amazing. Um, I thought it was like awesome. So, so yeah, that's how kind of we spend the morning. I'll make breakfast. We'll kind of enjoy each other's company. We'll start it off nice and slow. But this morning we actually decided to do this. So uh, doing this, we, um, uh, doing this, we did some preparation right beforehand. This is my first time actually using OBS in order to stream something. So the multiple cameras, we figured out how to use my phone and the other camera as inputs to it and set up kind of this interesting setup that you're seeing right now where you can see everything that's going on, on the table. We got these different views so that you can check out some of the details. We have a B which you can't hear me in the Be Right Back screen, so I just told you a secret, you're welcome. But uh, yeah, I love it, and like I said, I stole everything from Nicole. Like, all of this is hers, and it is now mine. But um, yeah, so far it's been pretty fun. Like, I enjoy doing hobbies, but it's always hard to get like into it whenever you're doing something like this. You, you just want to procrastinate. You feel like it's going to take a lot of energy or time or whatever. And once you're into it, it's like, I, I could do this all day, honestly. Um, like this little mulling process that we're going through. I'm trying to decide where I want to go to next. So um, this piece, I want to talk to you about this piece real quick. It's been a pain. Uh, this piece has been a pain. But it's going to give us some really good, interesting slices. So you can check this out. You can see the infill for this piece right here. I have been trying to do different types of infills for it. So I've been, the, the current one we're doing is more, uh, more of a border, so we have more structural strength to it. But the pieces where it keeps failing, the sections where it keeps failing is, this is actually a new fail point. I think that's just because of where the uh, filament stops inside of it. But um, this is a new fail point, but it always fails here, like right here. In this little section this is where just for your reference bearings go they sit in here and when these bearings get compressed down by this shield um, by this cover when the bearing sits in there it snaps it like almost immediately and you know that's really great if you're not taking it apart like I'm doing right now if you're leaving it together it doesn't actually matter because it's gonna be it's gonna stay where it's gonna stay. Uh, so it's not a big deal. But when you wanna take it apart to service it, or if you ever wanna remove this and, and change out some of the parts, it's hard to get that same kind of snug fit because you broke it. So I'm gonna reprint this one more time uh, to try and get more information about why it failed. I think this little section was because of the, the magic number is what they call it in 3D printing. So whenever you're doing um, certain type of level heights, it's like the stepper motor. It, it, look up magic number for 3D printers. It, it'll make more sense if somebody else explains it in a little bit more detail. But I think this is just an artifact from a 3D printer and kind of the way I 3D printed this object. But this one snaps every single time. I probably reprinted this exact one uh, for four or so times. So these two, before that two others, and before that two others. Um, so three times, three iterations of these exact same pieces. And they keep breaking, like they keep snapping in half. I, I may even have a spare of that. Yeah, I have, I have a spare of it. It's a, it's a really crappy spare. It was a terrible print, <laughs> but I have a spare of this one because I know these fail all the time. Um, and a couple other pieces here too. So we could just take a quick look down memory lane. Uh, I have a, a broken piece here. This broke. Um, here's another one of those failed pieces. So this little section right here snaps off completely. Like it, it, just, it just breaks all the time. Uh, what else is broken in here? Let's see. I have um, one of these dog bones broke on me. Uh, so that just sheared in half. 
And these are supposed to be made in like um, a different type of more flexible material so that they can translate a little bit faster or better. Uh, I don't care though, so I didn't do that. But that's essentially what we're dealing with. When, um, getting back to kind of like the topic, these, these fail all the time and I'd like to print some that don't fail. If I, if I can make that work, I think I'd be very happy if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, anyway, off of that tangent, my soapbox is done here. We're gonna get into the steering system here. So, like I said earlier, the steering system on this is really cool. Uh, some people have criticism that they don't think it turns wide enough. I think those people are just trying to turn too tightly because uh, I think it, I think it's great. Like, um, I honestly think it's pretty awesome uh, that it turns as much as it does. Um, but yeah, the steering system here is pretty legit. And I like how it all is very simple based off of these very straightforward linkages that drive back from this little servo right here. So I, I like this a lot. And I wanna show you um, a little bit in more detail how these parts are put together by taking it apart. So we'll start with the easiest section to take apart here. And it's easiest from the top where the actual thing is. So let's do that. All right, this is another one of those where I consider using a drive. It's too big. Do I have one that'll fit that? So I want to show you a really cool piece. And this is all 3D printed. Uh, so just bear that in mind when you're looking at it. Um, this part right here is the translation between the steering. So it has these little ball sections that completely like turn and whatnot. So th these, these allow you something to screw into so that there's um, a piece to translate to. But uh, what, what's really cool about them is this is 100% 3D printed, right? This little piece that articulates. They actually recommended for the steering linkage to buy uh, these little tiny um, uh, little ball couplers. Dang it, I'm losing all of my terms today. What, what are these called? Uh, these little tiny um, uh, linkage, I think they're just linkages, right? They're just linkages? Let me know if you know. But these little linkages right here, um, they actually recommended to purchase these, but I think you could probably get away by using some kind of design like this. Now these are really cheap, uh, and they don't take nearly as long to 3D print. They don't take nearly as long to get in the mail as they do a 3D print like this. But this was a custom 3D printed piece because it needed to turn and curve. So you could see, that this piece right here has some very interesting uh, curvature to it. So that curvature allows it to perfectly line up with uh, to perfectly line up with the steering system. So this, this is a custom made piece and it basically needed to be like this so that you can get any kind of play in your steering system at all. So there's a left and a right version of it, so you have to make sure you install them on the correct one. And it's not that hard when you're looking at it, but uh, it's definitely something you want to check out. Th those are really cool, but they're 3D printed in place, so these will never come out. Um, they've never tried to come out, but they've always worked really well, so the, the tolerances in between them are really cool. I like it a lot. All right, let's take off the other one side as well. Using the quick, quick Okay. So, 
All right, and then it just flops apart just like that. Set that down on the side there. And then we have just this little linkage set up. I think I'll take this off just based off of the bottom here first. What do you think? Yeah, we'll take it off from the bottom first and get it off of there. Because that should be the only thing holding it in place. We'll actually come across this more. Oh yeah, that's the one that was not working out for me to do. Because uh, it was tearing apart the plastic. So let's, let's take this apart real quick. I wonder if this would be good. Tools a hammer. I guess I guess uh, that book was awesome. Uh, look up Adam Savage's Every Tool is a Hammer. It's a really cool book. Yeah, it's, it's a super awesome book. The guy is very interesting. We don't we don't have the same thought process for things. Like um, the way he describes his own thought process is very much so chaotic and grab and slow. Uh, mine is more like methodical layout and put everything into place. And I've been working on kind of getting more like Adam Savage's thought process in a, a few different areas because it's worth it sometimes to, to be a little bit more chaotic, to be able to ebb and flow with things. Um, and it makes a lot of things a lot easier. One more. But um, the way he describes Jamie Heineman, I probably would say I'm closer to that than Adam Savage. Oh, yeah. And then that'll fall apart. So this is just the, this is like the full system. So it's just like that, uh, drills right into the base and then it, it's pretty cool. I think he did a really good job with that design. I think that's super simple and very straightforward and made it really easy for me to put together, which I thoroughly appreciate. Ooh. Look guys, uh, we also got a personal trainer who's been fantastic with us. Like. I didn't realize how out of shape I was. Um, but I also, so if you don't know me, uh, I wrestled in high school. I have like these expectations for my body, like um, physical expectations that is not the case anymore uh, for some reason. Maybe it's because there's no more three hours worth of practice every day. But um, yeah, I think the, I have this expectation that my body can do some very, very, like, endurance heavy things. And that's just kind of not the case anymore. And I haven't really gotten used to that, to that feeling of not being able to do something. So uh, I've been working through that as in like um, having a little bit lighter expectations on what my body can and can't do. 
and kind of starting a little bit like easing into it, getting a better like just gradual process into um, into various things and it, it worked out well. Well it worked out yesterday and my legs are feeling it. Um, so we'll do a little bit of active resting a little later today. Go for a little jog, a really light jog and just enjoy it, you know. As long as the weather cooperates for us, uh, it should be all right. So these little pieces that are in the center here are actually for the battery box. Uh, I think it's one of the first pieces that you put on, um, but it's not quite <laughs> like, it's integral to other sections of the, the box as well. So I think it's like uh, where the, the center gear train lines up, but um, it's not all that critical for other things. Um, so there's no point in leaving it on there. It's not gonna do anything else. Um, but yeah, I noticed that those were broken as well. So I'll go ahead and reprint them too. And I'm just kind of getting a list of things together so that I know what I want to reprint and what I want to print a little bit better, a little bit this, a little bit that. Um, I also got a glass bed uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm interested in trying that out, see what kind of finishes uh, it applies. And uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so now, as promised, getting into the more complicated steering section of this. So you can see that there's like a little bit of a, a curve to this one. So when you look at it head on, turn it that way, Ryan, turn it that way. There you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You can see that there's an angle between the body frame and this section right here. So that angle is integral to the steering system, essentially. So that, that angle allows the steering to get as much motion as it can, but it also limits it because the wheel is essentially turning at an angle too. So it, it, it's, it's a compromise that was made on that one on the design side, and I can appreciate that. I do want to see what I can do to help improve that, but I'm not sure that I have much to offer in that room right now. But um, all this is, is uh, you can see this little piece, let's just take it apart and look at it, but this little piece articulates, uh, moves freely, um, and it's all just 3D printed sections. Uh, the wheels have bearings because they're connected directly to the drivetrain, but these do not. Um, oh, and actually this part is broken too. I'm finding all the broken parts on this. And the weird thing is, not all of these parts need to be in 100% working order. These are the exact same things as uh, the other ones that we took off the other side. Are they? No. Oh, these are the ones I took off the other side. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the same. So now everything has to be in perfect working order for this to be able to drive and drive pretty well. But a lot of it does. Um, so like this sat in here and just kind of like articulated off of that piece that was down there and kind of drove fine. All right, so we'll set that aside. We'll take out those bearings or maybe we'll, yeah, we'll take out those bearings because that part's broken, but um, we'll probably leave in the bearings for any parts that are not broken. Because putting in bearings is another annoying piece to this. Like uh, I've tried many different methods of shoving those in and it's almost like you just have to have a special way of doing it. This, this, set those aside. Now we can look at taking this off. Put this back. Oh no, I'm stripped. The, the actual stripped so we'll be replacing this one if we can get it out we'll be replacing it yeah all right we're good there we go nice 
nice and easy. Yeah, the only, I need to get like hex pieces that fit to the screwdriver, if that makes any kind of sense. Because right now I'm using star pieces. That's not a good idea. I need some hex pieces that will fit to it. But for right now, star pieces work pretty well. As long as they don't trip the screwdriver. the full system right there so these do have like different sizes uh, you want to make sure you're connecting up the right piece to the right piece here so like this one goes to this one they have a nice friction fit and then they just have screws on each side and then as far as like connecting to the articulating piece this one they have screws that come in from the top and the bottom that connect up to the articulating piece and that gives it its sideways motion so it's pretty cool it's a really cool design. I like it. Alright, and this is the same thing, this little piece here. So I'm going to use my power tool, take this off. Let's see, so, what else we got? We're almost done taking this apart. Time kind of flew by, but we've been doing this for like an hour. More than an hour, hour 40, dang. That's how streams last three hours. I never really knew. This is kind of interesting. Let's see. Let's so just take this. whole thing comes off so you can check out how that works real quick all together um, so you have these two dog bones they have a fixed height right here we'll just put that right there and then this is the only section that swivels this is just connected up to that linkage system we saw earlier and uh, that's just where your wheel connects up to uh, so this turns and then suspension this can articulate up and down so it's pretty legit, you know? Like, it's pretty cool. Alright, so we'll take the rest of that apart. We'll uh, try using power tools again. See how that works out. We'll see if this one broke too. I've had a couple of these break already, but uh, these have not been that bad. It's just because they're very light parts and that's kind of like the only way. The only way you're really going to be able to get any kind of movement between them. So this one I like 100% understand. Looks like this one's okay though. Beefy boys, let's go. space. I feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, using a power tool in this section here because yeah. 
and then we'll look at probably the first small piece that I tried to make that was a little bit more intricate. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. So this piece right here, which is which essentially just holds up the steering system, the suspension system. Stars, man. Can't use them. Really not supposed to. This little section right here, which is really just kind of a suspension for it, uh, it holds up the, the suspension rods for the whole thing. This part um, was one of the first pieces that I printed, and you're going to be able to tell. It looks like somebody basically just shoved spaghetti in there and uh, maybe plastic or, or glue. Like, shoved spaghetti and just glued it all together and maybe some hot glue tossed into it. It looks like trash, basically. Uh, it looks like trash, but it does work, which is why it's still on the thing. But I do want to reprint this piece. Um, it's a beefy one and it works fine, but I would like it to look nice as well. That's all. All right, let's see. Uh, the proof of concept slash prototyping is over for this thing. Since we got successful rides out of it, um, and if you're, you were here at the stream at the very beginning, we did like a test on it just to prove that this thing does actually work <laughs> and it's pretty legit, you know, like I said, this is overpowered as hell and uh, I love it, I love it for that, um, but yeah, let's see what we got here, we're going to take apart this other gearbox here and then We'll be just about done. Oh, and we'll take a look at that. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this real quick. Like, look at this. It, it, it looks terrible, right? Like, I'm not the only one that thinks that. It looks absolutely horrendously horrible. Um, it, it's not what it's supposed to look like. Uh, you can see this was the bottom of it, and the bottom had absolutely no... Yeah, it's a lot of parts. It's a whole lot of parts. Uh, the bottom of it had absolutely no grip to the base of the 3D printer. So it's like... I don't know. I'm happy the part came off because um, if this one didn't work... Like, I tried to print it a couple times. It was just the settings were really messed up on it. And that's why I said, like, when I started this project, the main goal was to learn how the 3D printer settings work on a variety of parts. And as you can see here, that there's a variety of parts. A lot of them look very different. A lot of them have very specific functions and they need to be printed a certain way. Uh, so you have pieces that will all just kind of be a big block and they, they function together. You have pieces that are supposed to be printed out of different materials but you work with what you got. You have pieces that are gonna be dedicated moving parts. You have pieces that are meant to flex and meant to bend. Um, and you have like intricate pieces. So pieces that are supposed to be circular and round and smooth, but you have to do that with the layer line consideration. And you even have a dynamic piece that's in here that, where is it, here. These guys have those little eyes that articulate and move and this is all one 3d printed part you know and it's like when i started this project the goal was to learn how the 3d printers settings affect all different kinds of parts so everything right here had different types of settings a lot of it was probably the reapplication of uh like two or three settings to it but you know all of them had to be troubleshot a little bit um and that, that required me to get some 3D printing knowledge, uh, which I'm very grateful for. And that's exactly what I was seeking out of this project. So I got it. We, we got all the parts to where they function, where they work. And now we're just going to be talking about things that have issues that we're going to look to readdress. So this one, I already talked it to death. It's like the, the worst part in it, uh, the one that, that keeps breaking with no reason. Uh, this piece right here is one of those pieces that 
I probably would like to redesign to be stronger or have some kind of like metal rod that goes through the center or something. But this was just a solid piece, you know? Like uh, when I printed this one, you can tell that I just had a nice solid piece all the way through it, right? But uh, I'm not sure if that's how this was printed as well. It looks like it was. But a couple of the iterations that I went through, <laughs> pulled out the bag of failed parts one more time. A couple of the iterations I went through um, had some hollow sections to it, you know? So like this one had a hollow section. I'm not sure if it's better. Guest appearance. What's up? Hi. How's it going? I'm going to get just a room for us to watch. That sounds good. If you want to do anything, I, I fix the budget, so we have 30 bucks. Oh, nice. So you mean, fixed the budget? <laughs> yeah. I fixed it. Because it was broken. <laughs> it was wrong because it didn't It was wrong because it didn't have fucking money in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it doesn't have Chick-fil-A. I just think yeah. you would want something. Yes. I, I have nothing cooked, um, so this is me providing a cooked meal. Uh, Nicole is the <laughs> provider for our family. The great I Nicole provides. <laughs> shrimp is fine, so something will be made for dinner, but it's not. Do you want to hear Santa? No, I'm good. You sure? Sure. They, they love your hair. Okay. Well, so. it's a surprise. Uh, I'm going to surprise you and Jordan, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let's jump into the... All right. What would you like for, um, for lunch? All right. One second, guys. I didn't even. What up, dude? No, no. Do the, do the. What? I want to say. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know which one. Hi, Hi. Dylan. He What's wasn't up? in the chat, so I didn't know he was watching. What's up? It's difficult to reprint and replace a part. No, um, that's a good thing. Like everything here was designed with uh, reprint in mind, so like everything takes maybe two hours. Uh, so like at the most. I think the base is the worst thing, so it's like five or six hours. But if you're printing like one single part, it'll take two hours and any of the other stuff, you know. And when he first started printing, he would run it like all the time. I was like, oh, don't you want to give it a break? And he's like, it's not a person, Nicole. It's a machine. It can <laughs> yeah. run all the time without any issue. Right. Machine uh, equals slavery. Okay, let's not say that. Okay. Let's, let's cut right. that. Um, so we'll just cut that. Spicy Deluxe, no tomato. Anything else? No, that's that's it. All right. I'm going, I'm going to provide for our family. Nicole is providing for our family. She fixed the budget. <laughs> I so fixed it. So we have money. I anymore. found money. We found money in the couch cushions. <laughs> and that's how that works. All right, I'll be back. Um, but yeah, when I started this project, whole goal was to get more experience with the 3D printer and try and like get an idea of what these settings look like. Uh, the machines are listening. I know, and I'm doing it on like four machines that are recording me right now. It's like a bad idea. Shh. Drill. Don't listen. He's the only one that can hurt me. Well, the only one I can see. Let's see. I am debating taking apart the base too. Um, there's not really much benefit to taking apart the base, so I'm going to leave the base together. Um, I said full tear down though. All right, I'll take apart the base, I guess. I guess we'll take apart the base. I don't want to take apart the base, but I guess we'll take apart the base. All right, uh, what's the best way to take apart the base? So this, 
fast. Um, yeah, now I have to deal with that in a second. Let's see. Good deal. One of these comes out really easy and the other duh. <laughs> uh, this one basically I just have to wind it all the way out. So I'll deal with that in a second. Alright, but let's go to get away, I want to fly away. Yeah. All right, we're doing that with my hand. Leg up. All right. All right. So yeah, like um, what what else? There, there's a bunch of pieces that take a good bit of time. Oh no, the base is cracked. So I will have to reprint the base. That's okay. That's okay. Is the crack okay, or is it okay to have to reprint the base? I haven't decided yet. I'm leaning towards the crack is okay. Because the base takes a long time to print. Everything else takes like no time to print in 3D printer terms. Um, these wheels, I printed those wheels last night at like a 0.2, so those took about three hours. So I just knocked two of them out. Next project, um, so the next project is gonna be a better remote control that I build and program myself, because um, they're really expensive. So this guy is like the cheapest one that I found that had its own transmitter and receiver that would get here in any kind of reasonable time because uh, I was very impatient. Um, but uh, I think th there's a couple of different projects that are out there that can be applied to remote controllers. And I want to 3D print a box that will contain the remote controllers and use a bunch of parts that I have around. So I have a, um, an Arduino available and a bunch of RC related gear. And I wanna, I wanna program and 3D print uh, RC controller. I think that would be legit. And that way I can get much more, many more channels that can do a couple more things that I'd probably spend like 200 or $300 uh, getting off of the shelf and it probably won't be quite as customizable. Um, it definitely won't be nearly as many features, but I think it's, I think it's a fair trade-off. Uh, when you make it yourself, you can really print it for the purpose and I can make multiple without having to break the bank, you know? So yeah. And I think that the next big challenge or the next big project after this with the printer is going to be uh, designing a RC controller. Uh, it'll go with this piece, but then I want to transition it to uh, quad calculators as well and other types of first person viewing um, devices. So, yeah, that's kind of what that looks like. Um, we're also working on a couple of. Um, yeah, we're just gonna have to screw this out. We're also working on a couple of, um, like, I don't know what you call them. Like, uh, what would it would be like shoving. Um, so, like, uh, one of the things we did was a spice rack. Um, to be able to sort everything that's in the in the shelf so that we can access a lot faster and easier. Uh, so like, what do you call that? Storage and efficiency items, 
I guess. And those are pretty cool to 3D print uh, and use. So I think that's probably like the next thing we'll do. I think that'll be the next interesting project with the printer. Um, oh, but I can't forget about uh, the concrete tic-tac-toe board and silicone molding. So uh, we have a couple of figurines in the process of figuring out like um, how to manufacture them a little bit faster. Um, we're thinking about selling uh, either the concrete tic-tac-toe board as a product or um, a couple of the other things that we come up with and we figure out a way to mold those and make those out of like uh, just moldable plastics. So that one is a little less defined but we have like the manufacturing process down so it's easier to figure out um, how to make it once you have a design to work with. So I think that'll be something that'll just be kind of an ongoing thing. We figure out how to make one thing and then we just kind of place as an option to, to purchase for people who are interested. But um, yeah, finally finished the tic-tac-toe board. So that's kind of been ironed out a good bit. And I'm ready for that project to be posted and done so we can move on to the next one, on to the next one. But it looks really good, it's holding up nicely. We're gonna shove it outside as soon as it gets a little bit warmer so we can give it some outdoor testing. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there on that. But it's outdoor rated concrete, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. All right, but yeah, RC controller, do some uh, quadcopter stuff and um, other types of like cool products that seem interesting to us at the time and uh, probably some storage efficiency things um, and figuring out ways to mass produce those without having to use the printer all the time. So yeah, I like the molding process. The molding process was great. It was like awesome. Okay, now comes like the fun part. I teased this at the very beginning. We're going to do a little bit of knolling. Uh, and knolling is super cool. It's, it's super cool and it's super useful. Um, but I got the term from Adam Savage's book, uh, Every Tool is a Hammer, I believe it's called. And that essentially, um, that essentially said knolling was like his process of how to tear down a piece and make it like um, much more manageable how to store things, how to prepare yourself for the work, so to speak. So I'm gonna kind of prepare myself for putting everything back together before I look at all the pieces that I need to reprint because they broke during the take apart process or they just broke. Uh, so we're gonna do that now um, and just kind of get an idea of everything that needs to be there. So that will be the remainder of this, um, but we took it apart. I'm happy about that too. Very happy about that. Um, and uh, just to give the credit where it's due, this uh, this project is called the Tarmo Four. Uh, a designer who's out there, whose name I really just I need to know. I need to know. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look up the Tarmo Four real quick, uh, so that I know who put that together. Let's see, T R M O Four. And I want to give this guy has some amazing credit here. Um, engineering NS, and NS stands for something. Let's see, what do we have here? I guess I could show this to you guys, but that'll take me like two minutes to set up, so let me, let me just chill for a sec. Uh, official guide posted to the sub, oh what? That wasn't there. Let's see. Build process. Oh yeah, that was the person who put together the guide and that was really cool. That was really cool. Unofficial guide, all right, cool. Uh, engineering and S. I wanna say it's not simple is what, what it's supposed to be called. So, can't type today. We're going to hop over to the YouTube because he has a channel. Um, and we're going to search for 
engineering in this. Uh, Tarmo. Let's see what we got. Engineering nonsense. There it is. Nonsense. Uh, really, really sick, really sick design that he has here. Like it's, it's fantastic, and you should really go give him some love about this, uh, about this project because it, it is uh, sick. It is awesome. Uh, he did a really good job on this. So engineering nonsense put this together. Um, React content time. Uh, I have to set up. A I have to set up a main capture for that, so hold on. Oh man, this is gonna get interesting. Uh, we're gonna do it from this one and take the webcam from here. Copy. Uh, copy, regular copy. And then we're This is real life right here. Let's see. Give me my external mic. Copy that. This the reference, and now you should be able to hear me, which is nice. Uh, then we're gonna go to a browser. No, we need to do window capture. Let's see. No, not that. <sighs> Browser, display capture, game capture, media source. I guess we'll just do display for right now. Why not? We don't need to make it super complicated, Ryan. We just need to make it interesting. So let's check this out. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you may not be able to hear my desktop audio, so I make sure that's available. Alright, so let's check this out. Hi there, my name is Chris, and in this video I'm going to show you the latest iteration of my 3D printed RC car project, Tarmo 4. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing you've already seen the Tarmo 3 video. That car was a lot of fun, but even while designing it, I knew it wasn't the end of the road for the project. Upon completion of version 3, I immediately began working on the fourth and most refined iteration of the project yet. Unlike previous versions, this car is designed completely fresh from the ground up and uses none of the same parts from previous versions. Now, I never did an RC car before, um, so all of this is brand new to me. Uh, I've definitely watched this video, but like, uh, like he's saying, I think he did a fantastic job. And if he, if the Tarmo 3 was worse, like, wow, you guys, you guys, uh... As far as improvements really go, uh, let's just do the yeah. First of all, the car is about 20% larger than before. It also weighs a lot more. It's much more robust and can handle more abuse than the previous versions could. This not only means that the gears last much longer, but even the axles last an extremely long time at this point. The axles on the car have now been running since November of 2019. So the, the video I posted to my Instagram with these wheels here, you can tell these are not the same wheels that he has on his. These wheels are custom designed, um, so I put these this, uh, this mock-up together in Fusion 360. Uh, it's really, really difficult to navigate this program 
with, uh, without a mouse. Why did I decide not to include a mouse here? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do so you can get an idea of what this looks like. So all I did was um, uh, I took the existing idea of having this uh, interesting structure here where you have the, the wheel supported by these curving um, sectors, sections. And I took that idea for the suspension of the wheels so that they would be airless wheels. Um, and uh, I didn't have to buy like 40 bucks worth of wheels. So that's pretty much the inspiration there. Let me know, is, is this working? Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't personally know. Let me know if this is working first before we get like su super deep on it. Uh, and I gotta fix that video issue that we're having there. Let's see. Boom, what you got? Did you overheat or something? No, it's still going. Let's see. Give me a second, guys. All right, so this should just be... Nope, not that. Uh, here. Properties. And then just jump to number two. All right, there we go. Easy enough. But yeah, uh, the Tarmo is a super cool project. So Engineering Nonsense put together this whole 3D printed 3D printable model. All of these parts are designed to be 3D printed. All of them are designed to be easily replaceable within a matter of a couple of hours. And I don't know, like it's, it's a fantastic project and a really cool hobby. So this is something that you're interested in doing. Uh, RCs are fantastic and the Tarmo does a great job of laying out all of the 3D printed components. So if you're interested in just knowing how it works before you dive deep into it, uh, it's also a great starting point. So, yeah. All right. Since it's working, we'll jump back into the main screen. And we'll go full screen on this. Aside from one breakage I had that you may have seen me post about on Instagram, version 4 is now even higher off the ground than version 3 was. Grass is now no issue at all. Four-wheel drive is better than ever. The gearbox no longer needs to be completely disassembled in order to remove the throttle from the bit. One of my favorite changes is the addition of my new torque damper design. This new torque damper is much simpler than before. It's simply a specially designed drive shaft made from Ninja Tech Cheetah filament. Surprisingly, this simple design... Right there. So you see how that is bending and moving. So he's talking about Cheetah Tech, which is a much more flexible uh, filament than the 3D filament uh, I'm using. So this is just um, PLA plastic, and it's rigid. It's nice and rigid. It's not rigid enough to where it'll fracture and cause a bunch of issues. But uh, this, this filament is not nearly as flexible. So I printed mine just out of PLA because that's what I have available, and Cheetah Print is expensive. And like I said, I'm running this at like 25% its, its capabilities and it's already too fast for the wheels that I have. So I'm gonna start by addressing the wheels that I have here. Uh, I need to add a grip to the bottom of them so that they will grip anything uh, because they're too fast when they're just by themselves. Uh, so I'll add a grip to the bottom of those wheels and then I'll look at getting some sheet of filament to print out these specific pieces. But you see that curvature right there, it allows him to get more dampening in between the motor and the actual wheels. So the transmission of power is smoother and while it takes a little bit more time to like build up that kind of twist to it, it allows your motor to engage faster. It's a little bit less stress on your motor because it can get started sooner. And your, your actual car dampens, it dampens the acceleration of it a little bit so that you can get more grip and they don't just spin out. Mine definitely spins out. If you check out the Instagram uh, video that's there, it spins out like crazy. Well, 
while while we're there, let's just hop over to Insta. I don't know why I'm using that keyboard. I have this keyboard here. It's exactly what it's meant for, right? Let's jump over to my profile and check this out. So you see how it's just like spinning and peeling out. Uh, that's because there's no grip on the tires and the motor is super, super OP. Like it's, it, it's ridiculously overpowered. Uh, this is at 25% and it's just spinning out like crazy. If I bring it up to 100, it's gonna not move at all and then it's just gonna jet and break something. More likely than not. And I'm already breaking parts, guys. I'm already breaking parts. So I'm trying not to do that. But I think this cheetah filament on this, um, this transmission bar here would help out a lot. Mine works much better than the old one and stopped nearly all the breakage issues I was experiencing. As I mentioned before, there are just too many changes for me to talk about here. That is not to say that I'm 100% happy with where the car is though. There are quite a few things that I'd like to improve and plan to. For example, I hate the wheels that I'm using. These are meant for rock crawling and are just way too soft and not good at all for driving fast or drifting. I plan to design new wheels using the cheetah filament from the torque damper, but I decided to wait on that since that would further delay the release of the project. I also don't like the solution for the front differential assembly. This is an open diff on the front, so it's a bit more complicated than the rear. I'm currently using thick paper clips as pins in order to lock it all together, uh, but it's not a good solution. And again, I plan to redesign this, but time is an issue, so I decided to leave it as it is in order to release the project. The next thing I don't like is the turn radius of the front wheels. It's not terrible, but it's not as good as previous versions. I'd like to improve it, but again, time is an issue. Overall, I'm super happy with Like he's saying, the, the turn radius of it is somewhat of an issue and I think the redesign that he's gonna look into is gonna be significantly better but there were so many compromises that you have to make to get that kind of turn radius I totally get why it's the way it is so I'm fine with the turn radius the way it is especially since I'm thinking about like long distance stuff like I'm not gonna be doing very intricate small maneuvers I'm thinking this is gonna be like a race car uh, this is gonna be going fast as by design so uh, I'm not too concerned about the whole turn radius thing, but uh, let's back up for a second because I he did say one thing I don't like is the turn rate complicated in the rear. I'm currently using yeah, so that differential is actually different than the one that's here on the the existing iteration for the Tarmo. So that one may be his new iteration that he's working on doing, um, which seems pretty cool. But right now he uses an open differential. It is more complicated, it requires this uh, extra open differential part that has to be purchased, and it's not that expensive. But um, I think uh, I've been using like wire because I don't keep paper clips at the house, but maybe I'll look into getting some big paper clips in order to keep that from completely shattering apart like it does whenever I crank this up to 100. Thick paper clips Funny. as pins in order to lock it all together. I just New motor has power for days. Like I said before, there are a few things that are not fully refined at this point, but maybe the community can help with that. I've been amazed by the support and the community that are beginning to form around the project. Some people even began sending me and posting their own renditions of version 3. I really appreciate these people sharing their builds with me. It really is cool to see something I designed in the hands of somebody across the world. There's some people who did some really interesting things with the design. If you'd like to learn more, there are links in the description down below. I hope just as many people enjoy version 4 as version 3, and I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, I think it's really cool. So that is the Tarmo, guys, uh, and you should definitely go check out this guy because he did a fantastic job putting this whole project together, and I think it's it's totally noteworthy, you know? Like, it, there's just something to be had about somebody who's willing to share this much amazing time. Uh, hey, yo, thanks, Dylan, for stopping by. We'll catch you later. But yeah, this is this is the Tarmo. So the Tarmo was put together by Engineering Nonsense. You can go check out their YouTube page, which there will be a link in the description for that. Um, pretty much the rest of this is going to be dedicated to me slightly tweaking the way everything is laid out here. I'm going to leave the battery box together, and I'm going to leave the motor mount all together. But I'm going to take out the broken pieces and get those in the process of being reprinted and I'll take out the bearings for all of those and kind of talk about uh, each individual piece as anything interesting comes up. So if you have questions about each individual piece, how I decided to put some of this stuff together, 
um, or any issues I found or things that I found that are interesting for it, you know, let me know. Come on, guys. So this is just me pretty much organizing all of these pieces so that they look nice when they're laid out. Um, so like I was talking about, Adam Savage's book, Knowing. So Knowing is a process of getting things in order so that you can perform the work quickly and effectively and efficiently. So <clears throat> this, this process pretty much just involves um, the process that I'm going through, the way I'm using it and applying his, his uh, definition. I'm um, just going through, making sure like-to-like -like parts are put together so that I can see them together, so that I can get an idea of what I like and don't like about them, and to see if anything needs to be changed or adjusted based on that. And that's all knowing is. Uh, it's a really cool practice to do whenever you are like putting away various things um, or getting ready for the next day, the following day. So this is just the process of making sure you know where everything is, everything is nice and clean and tidy and there's nothing like trash around that'll distract you from doing the work that you need to be done, right? So that's, that's all knowing is, at least how I'm applying it. So that's all I'm doing right now is just kind of putting everything in its place, so to speak, so that I can see everything together. Now I'll be inspecting each individual part for like fractures, breaks, um, issues with the print so that I can get an idea of what I want to replace. Because not everything needs to be replaced. A lot of this is really good stuff. Um, but some of it definitely does. And I'd like to be able to, to do that all at one time to see everything together. So I'm essentially making an exploded view of this whole thing right now so that I can see all of those parts at one time. Um, this one is going to go there. I'd like it to be there. And I'm just being a little, I'm like allowing um, a little bit of a set obsession to jump in and uh, control how I want everything to, to flow. And that's pretty much it, you know? like. It's okay to be obsessive about a few things and make sure that everything looks good. Okay, so that's good. This is good. All right, technically, this goes like that and that goes like that. But I think I like it better when it's all together. Okay, let's see, so that's cool, that's cool, that's a little cool, <clears throat> um, yeah, let's just set that there, that there, um, these are with the steering system, so that makes sense there. This is the gearbox, so I kind of would like it to be closer here. I want to give myself some space. That's fine, I think it is. Alright. Yeah. Can't stick around. Servo, turn that that direction. Um, okay, and then we'll do the hardware in a second. Okay, let's get this. We'll do the hardware right now. So what this also allows me to do is get like a real good count of all the pieces that are actually used. So 
all the parts that are actually used on the model are now directly in front of me and available to be sorted, so to speak. So this just allows me to do that. Yeah, so there's a little rocking nut. There's a little rocking nuts, so that's good. Is this good content, guys? Is this good content? Dude. All right. Now we we'll want to reprint some of those. This is part of the steering system, so we place that over here. I'll set that like that. Okay. Paint. And we got this. So yeah, I I really think that's about it. So this is like the extent of the stream, guys. Um, we're just gonna be knowing from here on. Um, and it takes it's kind of interesting. It takes like a little bit of concentration, though it doesn't look like it does. Like um, this is actually taking more injury than, than I expected to, to get a get a good like to get a good eye at everything to make sure all of it is like like for like things like that make sure that uh, we'll just separate these roughly real quick and then we'll go ahead and place them in the right location Separate badly and then refine them. Those are there. Okay. Cool. I'll have to make those look nice, but that's Essentially it. Essentially it. That's all the essentials. Now that I have all the pieces apart. <sighs> all right, um, let's look at the ones that I want to reprint. All right, let's see. So we're gonna reprint these, uh, both of them, because they are broken. We're gonna reprint the dog bones here. So let me get some paper out of this. All right. 
so we're going to reprint the dog bones. I need three dog bones. Uh, two of the battery holders. Battery stands. Um, the uh, suspension mount. Front. I'll put a question mark on that one. Um, I need one of the steers. Um, I'm gonna call it a Y steer. Uh, link. Let's see what else we got here. Um, we do need two gearboxes. Because these are both broken. What else do we have here? Let's see. Ah, the um, couplers, uh, wheel couplers. It's really easy just to print four of those. And then I think that's about it. Is that it? I mean, uh, did, did I miss one? I think uh, I think that's it, guys. Anything gals? Um, I talked about reprinting the base, but I don't think I want to do that. It takes a lot of filament to do it in a long time, and I don't think the return would be there. Because the part that's broken on this, on this center section, is um, just the location where the nut goes. Uh, so it's not really structural. Um, and if that falls apart, we do have all thread that goes all the way through. Uh, so I'm not too concerned that the structure is compromised. I'm more concerned that it doesn't visually look great if you're looking at it in great detail. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, but. Uh, also included in Nolan is putting away all of your tools in a efficient manner such that you can reach them one more time whenever you're ready to hit them up again. So go ahead and do that. We'll pick up a little bit on here. for that right there. That trash. This gets put away. This gets put away. Um, this gets put away. Okay, so that's it guys. That's about it. That's all we got going on here. Um, the interesting thing that I designed myself are these tires. So I'm just gonna move those to the side here as like um, purposefully designed and then we'll leave this loop right there. Um, I do want to take apart this battery box so that we can see the battery. That I find to be kind of an important piece. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I want The thing about this, what do we have? This. No. This. All right. Yeah, plus these do count towards the total. So I want to make sure that they are viewed. So can't really count it as a full teardown if I don't take these off. Ah! Oh, all right, we worked.
worked out yesterday and I am feeling it. Gotta do some active rest later. Go for a light jog or something. I'm sorry for people who are like, Ryan, you had it so nice there. I mess stuff up all the time, so I don't really. Yeah, it really affect me a lot much. Yeah. Neighbors are clanking away. I don't know, somebody's gotta be moving. Boom. Alright. That's good. And this last one. All right, and this is the last piece. Like I said, this is a really cool design. Down to everything, every last little piece, even the battery box and its container. Yeah. So I'm just gonna set that here um, and this here too. So it's all like in the shop. I think it's useful to be in the shop. So the battery I'm using here is a 3S battery. Uh, so it's 11.1 .1 volts, 50C, and it's uh, 22 amp, 2200 amp, and milliamp hours. Uh, the ESC is 120, um, I want to say it's amps but it always sounds weird because of the rating system that they use. But it can work with a 2S or a 3S LiPo battery setup. Um, and that sends power through its control wires to the transmitter, which came with our little transmitter right here. Um, that transmitter gets its power uh, from, from the battery, which... So this connects up to... This battery connects up to the ESC, which has power that sends out to the motors via these three terminals. And that also sends power, the correct voltage, to the transmitter, uh, which sends power to the other devices, so the servo being plugged into the transmitter as well. Uh, so that's how kind of the power circuit works. It has a little on and off but, uh, switch, which is very useful for safety purposes as well as uh, just convenience of uh, uh, pulling this thing apart. So that is pretty much it. So this is a 100% teardown of a Tarmo 4. Um, it's been a very interesting process to take this thing apart. I have a couple pieces that I definitely want to uh, look at messing with a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna try and reprint basically these guys first and see if I can get that to sit well. And if I do, then we're good with it. If not, then we'll look at the design change. Uh, on that to get to get it a little bit more rigid so that it doesn't fly apart, which is what I'm really concerned about. Um, it actually might be uh, these pieces that are underneath because you can see the, uh, the print quality on these isn't all that great either. So the print quality on these is like, uh, it's probably close to one of the first pieces that I ever printed. So the sides maybe, I think maybe it might be the sides. Uh, so, so bear with me on this one. The thing is, this thing cracks out this way. So its failure is because it's getting pushed apart uh, too easily. It's partially because it's getting screwed down on top of this. So potentially it could be a failure of this piece and a failure of this piece. This one looks okay, but it definitely has kind of the same artifacts there. So I'll see if, I'll reprint these two. I'll reprint these two. Let's see if we can get that to work out. All right, so we'll say uh, rear, um, suspension.
that's about it. I am now hungry and it is one and this stream has been going on for quite the long time, right? Like it's been a while, right? Let's see. We're at two hours and 41 minutes. Guys, guys, this is too long. This is way too long. So I hope you've enjoyed this teardown of the Tarmo. It's been a super cool process to take all of this apart. And I've thoroughly enjoyed this process. Uh, I hope you have it as well. And, you know, looking at it, it's definitely um, an interesting system. And I'm pretty, pretty interested in seeing what everything will look like when I put it all back together so that we can make this thing work once again. Because if we made it work the first time, we can make it work a second time and hopefully it'll be even better. So that's kind of my goal with all of this and uh, I hope it shows. That, that's really what we're trying to do here. Make it a little bit better next time. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you for joining me on this beautifully long live stream. This is the first multi-hour one I've ever done. And honestly, the time just kind of flies by. So I think it's long enough for me. I'm hungry. You guys are probably hungry, probably not. You've probably been eating chips this entire time and not offering me any. But I get it, you know, I get it. Chips over the internet don't taste all that good, all right? But thank you for watching this live stream. Thank you for joining us on it. I think it was pretty successful with the amount of stuff we've been able to do here. Um, this knolling process has been kind of fun. I think this overall looks really good. And um, this is this was the goal, so this is uh, this is perfect. This is exactly everything I ever wanted from this process. All right, so uh, this is about it, though. There's nothing else on the stream, so I'm just gonna say bye, and we're gonna leave it awkward, guys. All right, so I'm just gonna go over here. I say 